Welcome back. All right, another news of the day video for all you fine people here for your Thursday, October the 5th, uh, five days out from the regular season. So Arthur Kaliev will not be on the Kings opening night roster to start the season. Uh, he's been suspended by Department of Player Safety, two preseason games, two regular season games as well. You guys can let me know your thoughts in the comments section below on whether you feel that's fair or not fair, too much, too little, all that fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, Kaliev will not be playing in their next four games, including two that matter. Uh, Calgary making news today. Zari and Wolf amongst those being sent down to the AHL level. Uh, Connor Zari was seen as one of the guys fighting for that last spot on the roster, although Dryden Hunt would need waivers. Zari doesn't. Uh, Wolf being sent down is a mild surprise, and I say mild only because by the end of last season, it was clear that he didn't have anything left to prove at the AHL level. He looks NHL ready. But he's down in the AHL, he's with the Wranglers again, and as an Abbotsford Canucks fan, I really wanted him to be with the Flames this year, not the Wranglers. Uh, they also have waived De Simone as well as Pedersen and Pospisil. So those three players likely to clear and end up getting sent down. Uh, Pittsburgh making news today. Kyle Dubas finally waves Andreas Janssen. It's a little bit late for Leafs fans, but it's happened. Uh, Koppinen as well as Alex Nylander being waived. Alex Nylander, a player at a decent preseason going. But again, he's found himself on the outside looking in when it comes to an NHL job for a while now. And so I think the discussion of whether or not Nylander's ever going to be a regular in the NHL, um, I, I think it's kind of settled. I don't think that's that's going to be the case. But uh, yeah, uh, Nylander's going to end up playing for Wilkes-Barre, and we'll see how things go. Uh, Seattle, everybody on waivers today for Seattle. We're going to load up Coach Alla Valley. Um, I honestly, I, I, I like this move on their part. You just load it up. Everybody, everybody on waivers at the same time. So it's Connor Carrick, Cameron Hughes, Cole Lind. So there you go. Canucks can pick up Cole Lind. McCormick, uh, Gustav Olofsson, Podorowski, Renke, uh, Schult, uh, Drew Shore, and Marion Studenich. There's nobody on that list that really jumps out as, wow, I can't believe he didn't make the team. Uh, but it does show Seattle has depth. Um, I'm already seeing comments about where Seattle might finish this year and, and the expectations that last year had was probably just a, a great year, but they, they're they going to have a hard time following it up. We'll see. They have a good deep roster. If they can get three lines worth of scoring again, they'll, they'll probably still find themselves in a playoff position. Uh, everybody from yesterday's waivers cleared. Uh, there was speculation about maybe Cal Foot with the Canucks, but nothing came of that. And apparently... Uh, they they considered it, according to Rick Dolly, while they considered it, but the fact that his dad, Adam Foote, is an assistant coach with the Canucks, they thought better of it, which makes sense. I mean, th there's been instances where a coach and, a, and his son have been in the same organization where one's behind the bench and the other one's the player, but it, it doesn't always work, and it can be kind of a challenge. So at any rate, um, everybody cleared yesterday's list and all those players, as far as I know, all everybody who cleared then got sent down. Columbus left me scratching my head a little bit. Uh, Aaron Dell's been released from his professional tryout, but they also listed Tim Bernie as being released from his tryout. Now, according to Cap Friendly, Bernie's a restricted free agent. So, um, does does that mean they're they're not going to retain him at all, and he's going to go to Europe or I, what's? I, anyways, it's just it's it's odd because again, he's listed as a restricted free agent on Cap Friendly. I I didn't know you could just release him. So, at any rate, uh, we'll see what happens with Columbus and, and if, if Bernie's out of the organization or what happens. Uh, Rick Bonus saying he's hopeful that Ehlers will be healthy for the start of the season for the Jets. Hey, you and me both, Rick. Uh, I, I do like Ehlers' game quite a bit. It makes a big difference to the Jets when he's in the lineup as opposed to when he's not. So, if they get Ehlers 100% for the start of the season, that's about as close to healthy as the Jets have been in a long time. And again, while there may be some distraction during the season regarding Hallebach, Shifley, and their contract status, to start the season, that shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully, they have a good start. Uh, last night, Connor Brown continued to make the argument that he belongs on the top line with the Oilers. Two goals and an assist for Connor Brown playing on the line with Connor McDavid. Uh, and honestly, uh, if that works, and it was a 7-2 to win over Calgary last night, uh, it, it really could make the Oilers that much more dangerous. If you've found a winger that can score uh, in Connor Brown, and if he can stay healthy, you're in good shape if you're the Oilers. So we'll see if that does uh, end up being the case, not just to start the season, but if Connor Brown can produce. I've been, I've been very impressed with Connor Brown for years, and so it's nice to see him getting an opportunity on a team that can score and where he's going to get a lot of visibility as well. 
Uh, James Reimer, as the, the backup position, is continuing in its battle in Detroit. Uh, he saved 21 out of 22 last night in a 2-1 to one win against the Penguins, remembering that he is in a battle with Alex Lyon for the backup job. Uh, Huso is the preemptive, you know, the favorite to be the number one, but uh, Reimer's played well during the preseason. Lyon's played well enough, too. We'll see how things go. Uh, and from last night's game, the New Jersey Devils beating the Rangers. It is a storyline, and it's a storyline that's been set around the league a lot with New Jersey over the last year or so. Speed. This is a team with a lot of foot speed on the ice and a lot of skill. And that's really something that in this day and age with the National Hockey League is of key importance. So the New Jersey Devils, the success they're having, the fact this is a very fast team, it really does show that when scouts look at skating and say, this guy's foot speed is better than this guy's, so I'm putting him higher, this is a big part of the reason why. Speed is really important. Looking at the Florida Panthers, for instance, that transition game. Carolina, another team, transition game. Puck's in your own zone. You get the puck, and you're in their end before they have a chance to react. Uh, New Jersey has that speed now as well, and they have the skill to back it up. So uh, look for a lot of fast breaks, a lot of two-on-ones, three-on-twos from the Devils this year. They're likely to give everybody fits. And uh, it could be a lot of fun. As long as their defense and their goaltending, you know, measure up. The Devils, uh, they're my pick for the Stanley Cup this year. But we'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. If you're browsing your way through, you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.